All right, squids. I'm going to take this little thing out for a spin, and yeah, I'm not sure exactly what's going to happen, but I'm ready for uh, to see how she runs on the key. Starts right up. Man, it looks good. And here we go, guys. This is the Honda Ascot. I wish it wasn't rainy, but you know, sometimes you can't pick the days that you ride. All right, I'm not gonna go too fast. This is a kind of like one of those type of rides where I just learned about the bike. The position for the legs is very odd, and the seat is so cushy that it makes my knees higher than my hips. So, oh, it's losing a little power for some reason there. It just kind of like stopped. All right, so we do have some issues with the fueling. It might be that cable, it might be the hose that's not routed properly. I don't want to go too far. I'm looking at it to see if um, it dies. I think it's just, you need plenty of gas. I don't think it's getting a good amount of gas into the carburetor. I think the hose is routed in such a way that it doesn't make a lot of um, sense. So I'm gonna have to look at that. So the first thing you're gonna notice on these old bikes, this one in particular is like so, it's strange the way the bike is because the gas tank, if you look at it, the gas tank is so far down, my belly clears the entire gas tank. So it's as if like you have a very small gas tank and it's like really far down. Like the entire bike is really far down. It just feels physically extremely small, which it is, you know, it's a small bike. But just incredible how tiny it feels and um, my uh, legs barely clear the gas tank I mean if you're looking at my knee I it just goes down maybe two or three inches past the top of the gas tank so it, it's as if like you're sitting on top of the bike but yet because the seat foam is so soft you kind of sink in and I know that this uh, seat is not going to be very comfortable for very long rides very the front brakes are almost non-existent there um, I need to work on them and I think I just got some oil on the discs very like this engine man that is a fantastic little engine so the bike is warming up so maybe that was the stumbling also from it being very very cold there is a little bit of a stumble but not much so it's definitely gotten better and i think you just have to be smooth in these old bikes one of the things i got to do is move the brake levers slightly up because i'm like going down too much on an angle and I, I don't like that air speed on this bike 5,000 rpms a bit of a backfire thing happening this is a pretty neat place here in Maryland this is the Underground Railroad and then they have the park police over there and I'm just gonna pull into this parking lot over here I'm gonna look at the bike so here's the underground railroad museum thing but let's look at the bike really quick there is a little bit of a burning oil smell but I think it's disappearing I think it was the oil from when I changed the oil I'm going to stop the bike this is what happens I think I might have to stretch the seat just a little bit more so here's the dipstick I think physically it is tiny you know, very easy bike to put on the center stand, unlike my Yamaha Super Tenray. So I found some cloth here, and I just want to check the oil. I am leaking oil, but it is not too much. And I'm like thinking, oh, maybe it's not even a point of checking. 
oil level is actually on the middle and here we go starts right up and it's warm now man too bad it's just so nasty and cold out There's something with the uh, carburetor for sure. I don't know exactly what's happening, but the bike is not perfect. There's a stumble, but I wonder it's just because I'm giving it more gas that it's kind of like dying. Let's see. Yeah, see now it's, I'm giving it gas, but it's uh, slowing down a bit as if like it's starving for gas. Yeah, I definitely have an issue with my speedometer. It's not reading. It goes up to 25 miles an hour and it stops. And I wonder what that is, but could be the cable, could be the actual speedometer. Giving it a full amount of gas, this bike does not like it. Yeah, I think it's just when you open up the throttle, something happens to the carburetor as if it can't handle all the gas. If you don't know much about the Ascot, they only made it 83 and 84 and they made it in two types of variants the Ascot VT which is this one's a V-twin and then they had one called FT the FT was a chain driven single cylinder and I think it's a little bit more rare than this but I like the VT a lot more and the shaft drive apparently people like the FT because the shaft drive does rob some of the horsepower but I didn't get this for the uh, robbing of the horsepower. I like the shaft dri dr drive sort of scheme of motorcycles. In today's world, we do love the utilitarian style bikes. So they thought that the Ascot was going to take over the CX500. The CX500 was Honda's utilitarian uh, offering. So they basically just shat, uh, sat not yet set in the showroom floors and very few sales and that is why these bikes are so rare but i think this one makes it a little bit more of a collector's item than the cx 500 you know i really like the cx 500 but you know honda was doing some copying i think they were trying to copy a little bit of the weirdness of moto guzzi and I think it's still kind of cool to have the uh, engine sideways, but you don't need to. I think the V-twin on this is pretty fantastic. So when you like look at some of the risks that Honda does, they do, they're willing to make risks in bikes. And lately they have been hitting some very successful runs with the Monkey, the Grom, the Ruckus, Africa Twin. But consider the Honda Element from Honda. The Honda Element, when it first came out, I think the first year it got very good sales, 2003, and then it just kind of died off. And what happened is that the people that they wanted to reach with the Honda Element did not reach them because it was too expensive. And I think there's a similar demographic that was lost in this bike. Honda was trying to reach a demographic that was, it wasn't the one that they, finally reached they were trying to get a I guess a newer audience for this bike but they ended up reaching people that were more interested in the CX 500 so only now I think people are starting to realize the the coolness of the Ascot I mean this is kind of an awesome little thing it's a very lightweight shaft driven v-twin that's 500 cc's you know to get a shaft driven bike these days you have to get like a very large bike you know Yamaha Super Tenere um, BMW GS's and only bikes from the 80s from Honda and Yamaha are bikes that have shaft drives and there's some guys that really like the shaft driven bikes the drive does rob a little bit of the power that's why the FT I think might be a little bit more desirable but honestly i like this one you know in the summertime this bike would be a killer bike no windscreen you get to feel that 
the very bare essentials of motorcycling. You know, when I look at my Yamaha Super Tenre, great bike, but man, you're a little bit disconnected from the outside world. You know, it's got a lot of creature comforts. And the Super Tenre is not like a BMW that almost is like a car. It seems like motorcyclists these days, they just want their butt cheeks to be warm with heated seats and they want their their um, hands to be nice and warm but do you really need all of that couldn't you just get away by riding one of these bikes I mean this thing is really fun to ride look at that bike man drum brakes in the back disc brake in the front yeah, it's not perfect, but it's so small. It is just so tiny looking. And it's very unassuming. I, I really like this bike. And I think I got it pretty well sorted out. Yeah, of course, it's got some issues here and there. I don't know. Man, I can't believe this thing works. I can't believe it starts, it runs. This is the uh, fastest I've gone on it. A little stumble there. Well, not bad for uh, a little bike, but I think uh, you have to adjust a little bit of my clutch cable. I can't believe this bike is alive. I can't believe it's alive. 1983, that's crazy. It's like something out of weird science. Like I feel I built a robot woman motorcycle. And it's alive. I can't believe it. It's, this is 1983. I mean, you don't see these bikes running around. You don't see bikes from the 80s. Actually, you still see Hondas from the 80s. I think the shadows, they're still around. That shows you how good of the um, good of an engine Honda built in that shadow. And now she lives in a nice heated garage. In Kazakhstan, it is illegal for more than five women to be in the same place, except for in brothel or in grave. I'm kind of stuck here. The cops won't bother me. 